I can't wait to take you along our next DIY project. Hey guys, it is Jen with Mother Time. I think anytime I say to Wayne, hey, I have an idea. I think he holds his breath a little bit thinking, oh no, what is she thinking now? What is she coming up with now? But this idea is no surprise. It's something that I've talked about for a while, especially now since we've added such character in the living room. A few weeks ago, I shared with you the update in here and it's so cozy in here with the DIY faux accent beams and the board and batten wall. But now the brick on the fireplace needs a little bit of character too. We painted this brick about 10 years ago and I wanna add some character to it as well. And I wanna do it very budget friendly. I was coming up with some ideas, but I think the most cost effective way to do this, because I still wanna keep some of the white brick, but just expose the brown brick that's underneath, almost give it like the Germ German schmear look, but I don't know if this is actually gonna turn out looking like German schmear, but just give it some character, just make it look more distressed. So, I'm going to use some paint stripper and just work in some sections and kind of just expose some of the brick that's underneath to give it that very distressed German schmear look and just add a whole bunch of character to this. And if it doesn't go as planned, we'll just paint it or I may even paint it the Ashley Gray like the board and batten wall. We'll see. But I'm hoping, keep your fingers crossed that this works out. I think it's going to add a ton of character and be very uh, cost effective too. Then we'll play along and decorate the mantle, keeping it very simple to give it a cozy colonial cottage farmhouse look. All of that meshed into one. So I'm excited to get started to see how this works out, just working in sections. So grab yourself a hot cup of coffee or hot tea. I know I definitely need one for this project. Sit back, relax, and let's get started. This is the paint stripper I'm going to be using. It is Citrus Strip, and I opted to do the spray just so I can lightly spray it on the brick and then brush it off just because I still want to keep a lot of the white paint there. I'm not looking to strip all of the paint off of it, just expose some of the brown brick underneath just to give it a distressed look. So I figured if I did the gel, that just might take away too much. I'm hoping that the spray kind of just really gets into a little, little bit of the cracks and that I can kind of take some, I got some bronze wool and then this will be what I'll be using to kind of take it off too. So I'm gonna just start working in little sections and seeing how it works out. Before I get started, let me give you one last look at the brick fireplace. We painted the brick back in 2015, but prior to that, when we bought the house in 2010, it actually had the original brown brick. So my hope is here by stripping some of the paint off of the brick, it'll expose some of that original brown brick to give me that German schmear look that I want. So I'm gonna get everything removed from the fireplace, including the fireplace screen. Now we actually have in the insert a wood burning fireplace. It makes it so cozy, but the screen kind Kind of hides and conceals it so you really don't see it unless you you know we have the screen removed so i have everything taken off and now we're going to do a test area first to make sure we like the way the product works and we like the way it looks so i'm going to add some tape and we're going to just do a little spot here in the corner First, we spray the test area with the paint stripper and we let it sit on for about 15 minutes. I didn't want it to sit on too long and then strip too much paint. It says a minimum of 30 minutes, but like I said, I didn't want it to sit on there too long. And of course, you can keep it on there even longer. So in about 15 minutes, we start working it and it was already starting to come off. We're using the browns wool, but then we wanted to try some other brushes to see if they would work better. We even got a toothbrush, an old toothbrush brush and saw how that worked. We even got an old grill brush too, which actually became my favorite tool to use for this project because I can really get the handle on it and working it too. We had some steel wool. We also purchased another steel brush to work things too. So we just kind of were testing it too to see what worked best in this test area and make sure that we liked the results. This is what the results look like. So of course I was sold and ready to get started. So we are going to prep the area. We're using some painter's tape to prep and cover all of the exposed areas.
Now we are ready to get started. So we decided that we are actually going to spray this entire top part of the brick. Now I will be honest with you, this says it doesn't have fumes, but it, there's definitely an odor to it. So, and it was bothersome to me. So I ended up wearing a mask when I was using it. You definitely wanna have some good ventilation, have some windows open, definitely have a fan. Maybe if you worked in some smaller areas at a time, it wouldn't smell. Um, I mean, it wasn't too bad, like what other paint stripper can smell like, but it's definitely, you can definitely notice it. Thankfully, it's not like the harsher uh, paint stripper. So, but I really wanted to get a good coat on this top part to see if the spots that we left it on longer would peel off quicker. So I ended up even doing the sides of the fireplace as well. So it could really sit on there and really hopefully peel off that paint. Also for this project, we had our protectant eyeglasses on and off. You'll see sometimes we have them on, sometimes we have them off. And of course some gloves even though I think you may catch me without them on at some points, but definitely want to have that protection. So here we get started with the scrubbing and I kind of thought that I would just get in there and it would just peel right off. But no, this, this definitely needs some elbow grease and you're working almost one brick at a time. So we just kind of took our time and went brick by brick. Uh, there is the grill brush that was my favorite one to use, that and the steel wool. And also we found using hot water as well really kind of helped loosen the paint too. So we were dipping our brushes and the steel wool in the really hot water and then applying it on there and that really seemed to help too. So again, here I am with the steel wool, just going over it. But what I liked about that is that I could really make sure that I was getting the look that I wanted, that it wasn't taking off too much paint because I really wanted to have like, you know, that German schmear look. So I had to run to Lowe's to get another can of the stripper. And while I was gone, uh, Wayne did a little bit of work too. So you can kind of see here now more is exposed. This is also the steel brush that I got when I ran to Lowe's. And you can see how well that works too. It also has a scraper on it. So we're just kind of testing different products to see what works best and what we like to use. I seem to have liked the grill brush more as well as the steel wool and definitely dipping it in the hot water helped to remove the paint too, but you can see here, we're, we're really working it to get that paint off. At this point, the paint stripper has been applied for a few hours and it wasn't any easier to get it off. We still needed to get on there brick by brick and scrub it. But again, like I mentioned, I like that it gave me the desired look. I was kind of pointing that out to Wayne, like this is how I like it. Um, I like how it has that distressing to it, but I was getting in all the nooks and crannies and just really kind of taking my time going over it. And I knew that the end result would look really, really good. And you can see here, I'm really putting some elbow grease into this, but the process took us from start to finish in working on the brick itself, probably about five to six hours. It wasn't that long for this space, but it's just, it's a slow process because you're literally going brick by brick, but you start seeing the results and it keeps you motivated to continue on. I also found rubbing the brick down too with some hot water, I was using some rags, really kind of helped to expose the brick too. So the next day, this is what we got done. Look at that, it's just so pretty, I, I love it. So here I am the next day spraying the spots that we didn't finish the night before. And we were gonna test it out, seeing if maybe we didn't let it sit on as long as we did on the top part, maybe it would come off a lot quicker and a lot smoother, but that theory didn't work either. We left this on for about 30 to 45 minutes and then started working on it and that didn't, it was the same as leaving it on for a few hours. We felt that it was made no difference. So here we go again, same thing, getting out the brushes, giving them a scrub, using all of our different tools, the steel wool, the steel brush, and my favorite, which was again, the grill brush, really just, I liked that I could hold onto the handle. I'm dipping it in some really hot, hot water and just working brick by brick, the steel wool. And then I would take my cloth and also wipe it down too. And now we're done. <laughs> Finally, after just a few minutes, right? I wish it took only that long. We're removing all of the painter's tape to look at the brick. 
Can you believe how this turned out? What a transformation. It turned out better than I expected. And I still can't believe that I was just telling you 24 hours ago about this crazy idea I had and now it is done. It looks amazing. And honestly, it was fairly easy to do. Just a lot of elbow crease to go into it. We may say otherwise, but I think I went into it thinking I just was going to spray it and then it was gonna easily just come right off. And it needed a lot of scraping to really get that paint off of the brick but the end result it was so worth it i've already kind of hinted to him hey what about painting the brick or taking the the uh paint off the brick on the outside of the house so i don't think he's into that yet but we'll work on him a little bit but i just love the result it gave me that german schmear look that i was telling you about it was honestly like reverse german schmear when you apply german schmear you're putting it over like the the darker brick this was kind of like doing it in the reverse way and gave me that look that very cozy colonial cottage look it, like I said, it turned out better than I expected. So, so happy that it is done and now I'm excited to decorate it. So I went to the back bar, my favorite little antique shop. Uh, she was closed today. I wanted to get a picture and I know she's got these beautiful frames and these really pretty pictures. And I thought one of them would, you know, definitely work for in here. I went down to the basement, just didn't find anything that I could envision here. So anyways, for now, I think I'm going to put the mirror back here, uh, bring my basket of wood bit out here as well, because I was like the look of a basket of wood year round next to the fireplace. And then just keep it very, very simple for now. And then hopefully eventually I'll get another picture for here to replace it or something to kind of swap out with the mirror. So we're going to do a little decorating. I can't wait for Christmas and for uh, fall to decorate this too. It just really gives me that cozy colonial cottage farmhouse look i love the texture and it was very inexpensive to do too it cost under 50 dollars, so great and so affordable two cans of the stripper we used and then i needed i got another steel brush and then some steel wool and that was about it everything else we had on hand so very affordable to achieve this amazing look so if you have you know, a similar kind of like white brick or something, you know, painted brick or something. Maybe this will kind of give you an idea to do it in your home as well. But for now, I am excited to get this decorated and make it look all cozy and cottagey. So let's get decorating. I'm going to start by adding a basket of wood next to the fireplace along with a copper kettle. Now I'd actually like to use a larger kettle here, but the larger one I have doesn't look good here. So this one will work for now. Then I'm going to add my mirror back and look at how pretty it pops against the brick now. I also have these crocks which I had here before, so I'm going to use them again. And then I just found at Savers the day before, no kidding, these beautiful candle holders, which I knew would look perfect here if this all worked out. They were only $9.99. Of course, I had my 20% off coupon. So I'm going to use them here along with some real candles because the real candles just give a really cozy glow. I'm also going to add this little piece of pottery that I recently found thrifting and Wayne is making a fire to make it extra cozy. And finally, I'm adding this topiary that I had and here is the before. And look at it now. What a difference, what a transformation. I still can't get over the transformation. It was worth all of the hard work that we put into stripping the paint off that brick because it just made this room so cozy.
And now you can see how pretty those sconces are too that I recently got that I showed you at the end of the living room update when we did the beams and the board and batten. And I know I just snuck a little piece of the sconces in there at the end, but now you can really see how they look in this entire room. They are just so pretty too. I love them. And I just love the way this room looks. It looks totally different. And it's, I know I keep feeling I'm saying cozy, but it's, it's just cozy. I hope you enjoyed this video and got some ideas too. And if you have a brick fireplace and have been wanting to change it and do something similar like this, I hope you found this video helpful. Wow, this does not even feel like the same living room. This is crazy. I feel like somebody came in from like one of those shows and like transformed my living room, you know, between what we did a couple of weeks ago and now this, it looks totally different. And then even with the hutch that we did a couple of months ago too. So I'll include links for all of those videos uh, of all the updates that we've done here recently in the description below so you can check some check them out if you've missed any of them but within the last couple of months this living room has totally changed if you watch some of my videos from like the last couple of years looks nothing like it now it is so cozy and like i've mentioned i've just really am drawn to making this like a very cozy with that colonial cottage farmhouse look and i think i've achieved it it has got all of those feels. Check, check, and check. I am so, I'm so happy. I hope you've enjoyed this little, you know, video of how I've transformed this and how budget friendly it was too. Give this video a big thumbs up if you did. Let me know in the comments below what you enjoyed the most. And thank you so much for just hanging out with me today and doing this with me. And you can also check me out over on Facebook and Instagram at Mother Time and also Check out my blog, mothertime.com too, for lots of things there as well. And if you are not subscribed to my channel and you enjoy videos like this, as well as like meal prepping and lots of thrifting, make sure you hit that little subscribe button so you never miss a video. Okay, you guys, this was so much fun. I'm gonna grab my coffee wherever it went. Enjoy this cozy fire Wayne started for me and just enjoy this view. I feel like I have transformed like transport, I was gonna say transform. I transported to my cottage in Williamsburg and it has, it has those feels. It really, really does. So thank you so much for joining me here today. I will see you guys in the next video. Bye guys.